Hi, I'm Liu Batchua. I'm the founder and creator of TEDx Ferguson. Be still, but move your arms and see how you come across to yourself. Hello, I'm Hax, and I take care of all things video. TEDx Folkestone is a licensed event under the TED guidelines, so we're independently organised. We're run by volunteers in the community. One of the bits that I always found the most exciting and inspiring was seeing people's journeys. I always wanted to do a behind the scenes documenting that process. We thought it would make a great opportunity to learn documentary filmmaking by following the whole process of putting TEDx Folkestone's event together. In the beginning we came up with six kind of mini doc ideas and we set ourselves between 12 and 15 minute runtime for each of them. This was the first time, as far as we know, anyone's done anything quite to this scale. So there's no framework, there's no existing templates. We just are rolling with it, which I always think is the most exciting. Lots of questions to, to and fro all the time. It was a good development process. It was nice to be part of it. You could see a whole progress. Every single member of the film team had evolved in some way. Hannah, for me, she was a quiet little mouse in the room for a long time, but I think she absorbed a lot of what was being said, a lot of what was going on. She'll say she was shy, but Hannah, I don't think you can be too shy to actually just turn up on your own. As time went on, I think she came out of her shell and started to communicate a little bit more about what she wanted to do. I got interested in film when I was less than 10 years old, when my dad gave me his old camera. When I found out that it could film, I started filming everything. So cool! Throw it! I can film directly. After I finished school, I got my first job in a call centre. It was quite nerve-wracking. It was my first job. When I left school, I did two weeks with Saga, and I was video editing for their YouTube channel. I found out about TEDx Folkestone through my mum. She actually found a Facebook post on the Folkestone Quarterhouse page. The nervousness came when I was about to go to the first meeting because I'm quite a shy person. I was going to something I had no idea what I was getting myself into. But I warmed up to everyone really quickly. They were all really welcoming and I really got stuck in and I've never regretted it. She's gone from a production assistant on one of the mini docs to being the director of the mini doc, which was a challenge I think she found it completely daunting. But seeing the first cut of what she's done, well, I know people who have been in the business for a long time wouldn't cut something as clear as that on the first assemble. And I found that amazing. That's fine, but I can send them to you whenever you want. Lucy always makes me laugh. I can remember the first night that we all turned up to film, she was very quick to pick up the boom. You know, I came out of that, of that meeting and I said to my boyfriend, oh my God, like, I found my niche. I'm going to be a boom holder. I'm going to quit my job. Anyway, it was only until we looked at the footage that we realised that the boom was actually visible in the entire <laughs> in the entire shot, like throughout the entirety of my filming. I feel like it's better for the whole crew that I stayed away from the film equipment since that day and have taken up more of an admin producer role. Um, I say that because apparently I'm a producer, but I feel like all I do is organise people, but maybe that's what a producer does pretty much what a producer does. I like that it's got more of a technical name than like Lucy Organizer. Admin Girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think she felt that her organisational skills would help add traction to the group. We've got a camera crew up there, they won't film anything. Yeah. I was always a bit of a film buff from when I was small. And then at school, that kind of translated into drama and I used to help out with the school play. So I was technical prefect. I went to UEA to study film and English. I followed my lifelong ambition to be a sewage water sampler at the Environment Agency. 12 years later, I am still there. Thankfully not still sampling sewage, so slight promotion. I found out about TEDx Folkestone through LinkedIn. I didn't want my film degree to go to waste, so that is why I offered to volunteer. And when I rocked up, I kind of assumed that everybody would be like me and not involved in the film industry. And I felt completely out of my depths when I realised that 
everybody there was somehow involved in film. So I just took up some admin roles because that's what I do and that's what I know. Do we need to capture that? She thought she didn't have anything to do and didn't have a role, but we wouldn't have been there on time, on the right days, with the right cameras, if she hadn't have been there. In that half an hour, try and capture Claire for service. On the day of the event, she worked off a carrying board, which was completely and meticulously laid out. Everybody knew what they were doing, everybody knew what they had to do and where they had to be. So for all future employers, this is an example of my organisational ability. It's a giant spreadsheet, but it's colour coded. And look at the size. Now, I'm not saying that size matters, but I should really get everybody to sign it. We could auction it off. I mean, we wouldn't make any money. She doesn't think that she is, but she, at like 100%, is exactly what you want as a producer. So she's not doing this as a job, you know, this time next year. She should be, because she is good enough. Then I would rather see if there's somebody else that I could sure. I mean, I think Gary went to pretty much everything we did and he was very much, he had that meticulous focus and he kept us on track. He does truly cross his T's and dot his I's. And Summing up for you right now? How would you think I've always loved films and movies ever since I was a kid and that really carried through right into my student and university days. I started out as a newspaper journalist. It was something that I wanted to do right from when I was in my early teens. I worked my way from there, from writing about education as a correspondent to being in a school uh, running a mentoring program. I moved into copywriting and marketing, which is what I'm doing at the moment. I heard about TEDx Folkestone through social media. Every year I set a theme to help me focus my goals and activities for the year ahead. And for 2019, it was broadcasting. And one of the things on my list was about video. I kind of think sometimes, how would we have coped without Gary and his questionings and just being totally on point? The challenge was really to make the directors of each of the mini-docs aware of what they had to do for their own story. We couldn't plan storyboards specifically in advance because we didn't know what was going to happen. You have your story as a big wide context, but then you need to find where is your jeopardy, what are the solutions, what are the resolutions and stuff like that. One of the big challenges for me was interviewing people on um, film, on camera. Tell us when you, when you were a TEDx speaker and what you were about. talking about this morning. As a print journalist, I'm used to asking the questions and then listening and just scribbling down the answers in shorthand in my notebook. With film interviews, I had to learn how to ask questions in a slightly different way so that I was able to provide the context around the answers. In order to actually get people to say stuff quickly and within context uh, there is a technique that you need to learn within documentary filmmaking and Gary was really quick to embrace that. On the main event I was quite nervous I didn't really know what to expect we had a big spreadsheet with all the times of everything happening where we needed to be but it actually turned out really well we had a lot of free time to work out where we were going what to do and we just went with it when there was a lot of buzz going around and got what we could. I didn't really have a specific role and therefore I don't I didn't feel like I was overly helping. However, loads of people said that I did help and if it wasn't for me being super organized and like banging the drama of we're meeting on this date that things wouldn't get done. So that was nice. Another challenge for me in TEDx Folkestone is not feeling I'm experienced enough. There's a mix of people, so there's people that work in video for their day jobs and there's people who have never worked in video but have other skills like journalism and just organizing everything. Bore the hell out of your friends and family, talk to yourself. Seeing how the team came together and how much they all grew and they all developed was so exciting. It was really inspiring to see how much they got back out of it. I'm actually the youngest in the film team. There's a mix of people, but everyone has helped me a lot. I've definitely learned a lot in and out of TEDx Folkestone with the group.
My highlight was pushing myself out of my comfort zone because I am a big chicken, not dragging a friend with me or my mum and doing something on my own. That in itself was a massive highlight for me and it's done like wonders for my confidence and my self-esteem and learning about the capacity that I have as an adult, like I can actually adult, which is always a win. We just got on so well and it was just so much fun working on filming during the sessions and then also working on the editing and all the background stuff that has to happen to put together a series of mini documentaries. Everybody is so encouraging and supportive. That's quite um, unusual sometimes to find a group of people that big each other up that much and they help you achieve your visions or I don't know, whatever you're wanting to get out of it. The learning curve is now taken Hannah, Gary and Lucy to another level of their own production skills. After TEDx Folkestone, I really want to get go further into camera work and video editing. It's what I've wanted to do for a long time and I feel like TEDx Folkestone has really got me back into it. In general, I would like several yachts and a very big house in Faversham. I'm going to be using video in my own business and using it as a way to help other businesses. I think in future I would like to be more involved in like a designated role, be that filming or something more like in the sponsorship side or the organisational side of the actual event. After the main event I was a bit upset, I felt like it was all over. It was far from over. We've got a lot more work to do on these mini documentaries, which little did I know I'd end up editing one. But actually, I'm really grateful for that. I've learned a lot from it. And COVID-19 has actually helped me have the time to do it. And we also have a lot more work to do for next year, which I'm really looking forward to. What's really exciting with these films is not just what we've achieved, like the year just gone, but how much these films are gonna help going forward. Having that resource for the ongoing new people um, will actually, I think, have a, a double-edged sword benefit. We initially approached it very much from a film point of view and a documentary point of view, but there's also the marketing angle, the community engagement, sharing the message both of TED, TEDx as a whole, and TEDx Folkestone that we are yet to see. I think I got more than what I wanted out of TEDx Folkestone because now I have like eight new BFFs. I met some amazing people that share my interest in film. I've learned a lot from people with different levels of experience and I've had a few other work opportunities. Thank you to TEDx Folkestone. Even if I was to move away from Folkestone, I would still probably want to be involved on some level in, in TEDx because I think we've kind of made a bit of a family. To have a TEDx on your doorstep in your local community and to have the chance of getting involved is really quite something. It doesn't matter if you don't feel you're experienced enough, you can definitely bring something to the table. If you want to be part of our super cool TEDx crew, I'm blatantly going to make badges next time around. That is not actually going to happen so don't only get involved if you want free stuff because we're not going to do it. But if you want to be involved, there is plenty of uh, different roles, not just film stuff. If you're like me, you can make up a role. You can just turn up and hang out. Sometimes I drink wine. It's great. What I'd say to anyone thinking of volunteering for TEDx Folkestone is go for it. If you want to be part of our BFF crew, <laughs> volunteer.